Newton's first law was the law of inertia. It's the idea that objects tend to continue doing what they were doing, they'll continue in their state of motion, unless there's an unbalanced force acting on it. And so in the first section we talked a lot about balanced forces. We've got two forces acting on an object in opposite directions, but they're the same type of force, or the, they're the same size force, and so then the object will continue in constant velocity or at rest. In the second section we're going to talk about what happens when forces are not balanced. What happens when we have one of those unbalanced forces? And that brings us to Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that if there's an unbalanced force acting on an object, it will accelerate in the direction of the force, in the direction of the net force. So there might be multiple forces acting on an object, but whichever one is pushing harder, that's the direction the acceleration will happen in. Now remember that acceleration is a change in velocity. So that means that the velocity of that object is going to change when there's an unbalanced force. Either it's going to slow down because of the force, it's going to speed up because of the force, or it's going to change direction. All three of those are valid forms of, of acceleration. The easiest way that most people remember this law is just F net equals MA. This one right over here. So we can just consider that to be Newton's second law. That's the mathematical version of that relationship that we just explained. Okay, and so when we look at this formula, we get mass in kilograms and acceleration in meters per second squared. And so the base units of force are kilogram meters per second squared. So you can see that over here, kilogram meters per second squared. And we have a special name for that. That's called newtons. Okay, so a newton is not really the base unit of force, kilogram meters per second squared is, but the newton is the named version of that unit. And so we're not going to have to use kilogram meters per second squared all the time, you're welcome to just call it newtons all the time, but it is going to be useful to understand that newtons is made up of kilograms, mass, and meters per second squared, acceleration. If we look at the formula force equals mass times acceleration, we can see that a little force gives us a little acceleration, like this. But if I pull back the spring all the way so that the spring produces a large force, that large force translates into a large acceleration. If I put in a metal ball instead of a glass ball to increase the mass, then I would need a much larger force to produce that same acceleration. So when we have balanced forces, just like we were talking about in the law of inertia, F net equals zero. And what that means is that the acceleration equals zero. And we talked about that many times in the last set of examples, that when forces are balanced, you're going to have constant velocity or an object at rest. That's because acceleration is zero. So that just means velocity is not changing. When you have unbalanced forces, then that acceleration must be more than zero or less than zero, it could be negative, but it must be something, right? Acceleration means a change in velocity and that is the result of an unbalanced force. So let's look, in, look at an example here. Two children pull in opposite directions on a doll. One pulls with a force of 20 newtons east and the other with a force of five newtons west. And we're supposed to find the net force. I'm going to draw a picture really quick Here's the doll. It's a very interesting doll. I don't know why they both want this particular doll, but we've got one pulling east, 20 newtons, and we've got one pulling west, five newtons. And I tried to draw those vectors relatively the right size compared to one another. So, when we just look at the diagram, we can tell that this doll is going to go in the direction of the 20 newton force, right? 
the total force acting on this doll is not going to be 25 newtons, but it's the vector sum. So we have to take into account the direction that each of the vectors are acting in. And so since we've got 20 newtons to the right, let's call that the positive direction. And let's call west the negative direction. So east, positive, west, negative. And so when we calculate the net force, we want to make the 20 newtons positive, because that matches the direction, and we'll make the 5 newtons negative. So the net force is going to be 20 newtons minus 5 newtons, which is 15 newtons. Now you probably could have figured that out without this equation over here. I hope you can do that mental math. But it's going to get more complicated than this, and so understanding how the equation works is going to be useful. So F net is 15 newtons. This is a vector, and so usually the notation that we're going to see is an arrow on top of that quantity of that variable. And so that means that we need to put a direction on this 15 newtons at the end. So 15 newtons, it's positive, that matches with east. And that should be what you would have expected based on the diagram as well. So 15 newtons east is the net force acting on that doll. Example 2. A girl pushes horizontally on a 10 kilogram box and it accelerates at 2.5 meters per second squared east. If the force of friction is 50 newtons west, with what force is the girl pushing? So let's draw a free body diagram to begin with that will hopefully help us to get our minds around what exactly we need to do to solve this thing. So we've got the box here and it's being pushed horizontally and it accelerates east. And so that means that the girl must be pushing east, right? So here's our pushing force from the girl. We're going to call that FA, or the applied force. So that's producing this 2.5 meter per second acceleration, meter per second squared acceleration. But there's also the force of friction acting on it, which is 50 newtons to the west. So friction is always going to oppose motion. And so we also have this other force, which is the force of friction. Those are the only two forces that we really need to consider in this case. There is also going to be the force of gravity and the normal force. But in this case, because we're talking about motion in the east-west direction, so our acceleration is 2.5 meters per second squared, east, we're not going to take into account the north-south forces acting on the box. They don't affect the east motion at all, and so they do not need to be included in our formula. They also can't even be included in our formula, because we can't do just regular algebra with vectors that aren't in the same plane. Okay, So you can't add up this, this normal force with the force applied, they don't, they don't work together, they're not in the same plane. Okay, And so we need to be careful with that. There's a tendency to put the force of gravity in every equation that you do, even though it's a horizontal one. And we need to try to avoid that. Only the times when there is vertical motion do we need to keep the force of gravity or the normal force in that equation. So in our case, we do not need to take into account the force of gravity or the normal force. Okay, We only need to take into account the applied force and the force of friction because this is a horizontal question. So we're trying to figure out what is this? What's the applied force? So we're going to use F net equals MA and I chose that because we are given the acceleration here, we are given the mass of the box and we're given one force in the question and we are asked for what is the applied force? What is the, With what force is the girl pushing? So I look at the question and I analyze what are all of the things, what are all the pieces that I'm given and what are the pieces that I'm asked for? 
and then I'm going to try and match those pieces to some method of getting that one missing piece. And in this case, those pieces match fnet equals ma. Now, I, I have to realize that fnet is made up of all of the forces acting on this box in that horizontal plane. And so the force of friction and the applied force, they both need to go into fnet here. So I'm going to take fnet and I'm going to split it into its pieces because what we're looking for is one of the pieces that's in fnet. And so I'm going to say that east is the positive direction and west is the negative direction. And I'm doing that because the box is accelerating toward the east. And so I may as well make that the positive direction. So then I'm going to say the applied force minus the force of friction is equal to mass times acceleration. Now I really should put vector symbols on all of my vectors all the time, but I'm going to understand if you forget that sometimes. I'm going to forget that sometimes. So applied force minus the force of friction equals mass times acceleration. Now I can put in the numbers now if I'd like. 2.5 can go in the acceleration spot, 10 can go in the mass spot, 50 can go in the friction spot. But what I prefer to do is rearrange the equation first and then put in all the numbers because sometimes that's going to matter. However, if you really prefer to put in the numbers first, you go ahead and do that. You're going to find every once in a while that you're going to get stuck in a place where other people who rearrange the formula first will not get stuck just because of how algebra works with variables sometimes. Okay, so in order to get the applied force by itself, I'm going to add the force of friction to both sides. Okay, so I need to add the force of friction in order to get the applied force by itself. And what I do to one side, I also have to do to the other side. And so that leaves me with the applied force is equal to mass times acceleration plus the force of friction. Vector, vector, vector. Now I've rearranged it so I have the applied force by itself. So now I can put in all my values. The applied force is equal to 10 kilograms times 2.5 meters per second squared. The 2.5 isn't squared, the seconds part is squared. Plus 50 newtons. Now I don't need to make it negative 50 newtons here because I already made it negative 50 newtons, or I already made it negative force of friction right over here. That's important. I don't want to put in the direction in multiple places. I already put in the fact that the friction is the west direction all the way up here. So now I just have to do this calculation. 10 times 2.5 is 25. 25 plus 50 is 75 newtons. This is a vector and so I need a direction on it as well. And so my applied force is going to be to the east, right? Even if I didn't already know that, my key over here says that positive is the east direction. And so my answer comes out positive, which means my direction must be east. And there you have it. Now, sometimes you will be asked to calculate force, but you maybe won't be given all of these pieces. Maybe you won't be given acceleration, but you will always be given a way to find acceleration. Okay, and so sometimes you'll have to look back at kinematics. Sometimes you'll be given velocities and time, and then you'll be able to calculate acceleration in order to use it in a force calculation. So you sometimes have to have to be a little bit careful about what you've been given in the question while you're figuring out what's the path I can use to get to my final answer.